So like I was saying, the albumin is gone. It's gone, right? You can't, because now the liver is not producing any more albumin. Now, what happens is your bilirubin goes up because it can't go to the liver. And even if it does, right, if it eventually goes to the liver, the liver is dead. It's like going to a dead man's house. Like, dude, do you have lunch? No, I don't. I'm dead. Right? I know. But anyway, another thing, hyperhestrians, I already talked about that, right? The estrogen is going to be elevated. And uh, these people have, unfortunately, the progression of alcoholic cirrhosis or any kind of cirrhosis is cancer. I'm sorry. Hepatocellular carcinoma. Terrible disease. It's my kill. 20% chance going from cirrhosis into cancer. That's one of the risks. So, now that I talked about that, they probably won't die of cancer. You know that, right? I hope you're aware of that. Probably not. It's something else. Let me tell you. Now, I know I didn't really go on into details. Uh, just for people who really want to know this, how do you know a patient actually has poor hypertension? And then it's just not like this guy's got a beast belly. And the belly belly is just big for nothing. Who cares? But what actually we do in the hospital, uh, this is just a little more clinical. Uh, as a second year medical student, I don't want to worry too much. But if, they ever, if you ever get tested, what we actually do is called parasynthesis. And we actually... Um, you put a needle and you aspirate, called you know, aspirate the uh, ascites, ascites fluid, you draw it out. And you measure something called the serum ascites to albumin ratio. So, how do you do that? So, you get your serum, right? Can I erase this? Run out of space. So, serum ascites. Right. Over ascites. I kind of like to make it look like a formula. Albumin ratio. And this is greater than 1.1 gram per deciliter. It's definitely ascites. So, how did you get this? See, I used to memorize this and I'm like, wait a minute, let me think it through. I like to think and understand this. That's why I do these videos. Understanding how things work. That's what kills medical students. They memorize and memorize and you ask them a couple weeks later, they're like, man, I forgot. So, in your serum, there should be an albumin level, right? In your ascites fluid, unfortunately, you should have had albumin. So that's it. If the number is greater than 1.1, what they're trying to say is for this number to be greater than 1, right? Can you guys see? Greater than 1, you have to have a low number of albumin and a higher number of albumin in your serum, right? Because the only way you get, if you have a smaller number here, so you don't have enough albumin in, inside the acidic fluid, you, you wouldn't, right? Probably not. It's going to be low. But if you check your serum, there should be a little bit higher than what's in your acidic fluid. If you divide that number, the ratio together, let's say there's, um, let's say, 2.2 uh, .2 grams, you know, inside your, um, and it's about 2. Believe it or not, 2 is less than 2.2, 2, right? I <laughs> know, right? See how that So 2 and 2.2, what? 1.1. Kind of made up that number. But it works out perfect. But I just want you to be able to see that the number of albumin albumin inside your acidic fluid, which is like you're stuck inside a peritoneal cavity, it's low. That means when you draw it out, it's mostly what? It's fluid. It's coming from the... Pad, uh, the port, the pad portal bed. All right. Just got a little side note for you guys. You know, uh, I try to like to make things as comprehensive as possible. Uh, now, while we kill this guy, at the beginning of this lecture, I was saying this guy's gonna be coughing. <coughs> and I'm, oh, bam! You're like, what? Coffee ground emesis, brown, dark brown looking uh, uh, discharge. And what happens is. The esophageal varices, the rupture. But you have to realize that can kill them, right? Because if you bleed, you can bleed to death, right? You can choke on your own blood. You can bleed so much. You can aspirate the blood into your uh, lungs, causing some kind of you know pneumonitis. You can die of that. Or check this out. 
you have the portal vein, right, draining the fluid, and all of a sudden, this fluid is leaked out. It's leaked out in the peritoneal cavity. But remember, there's a lot of things in your belly. There's bowel, right, your small intestine. If bacteria gets in here, all of a sudden it infects this uh, uh, perit peritoneal fluid, you're done. You go into sepsis, baby. Now, you call it out spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Because it's very spontaneous. Bacterial peritonitis. SBP. This is what's going to kill the patients, guys. I know it's a sad ending. I should have made the story up in the ever after, but I will try to. Right? Now, the patient is telling you, I got some abdominal pain. Right? They get a fever. They're vomiting. Right? It makes sense. If the bacteria is in there, you ever had a cut and it gets infected? Does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts. So, if the belly will hurt. You're going to get a fever. Then you start throwing up. Right? And how do you know? You, you take their belly. You push on it. It hurts when you push, but when you let go, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, stop, doc. That's called rebound tenderness. That's, that's a surgical emergency. You rush them to the emergency room immediately because they're going to die of sepsis, right? So at that point in time, you want to treat them. You give them broad spectrum antibiotics. Give them some triaxone, rocephine. You should take care of that at least pen in a time because now their peritoneal fluid is infected. That's bad. You check the, you take a, a your needle, you stick it in there, you pull it out, you go to the lab, you see gram stain. It comes back. Guess what organism is doing the damage? Let's start. E. coli. Man, this guy's a bad boy. You see that guy? He does a lot of damages. You probably heard about it. You're like, eat him again? Yeah. He has on his friend, Klebsiella, Ella, Ella, right? And... One of his other friends, strep pneumonia, right? Pneumonia. Yeah, I think I spelled that wrong. Pneumonia, yeah, something like that. Pneumonia. Oh, I got it right the first time. You get the message, right? These guys, you probably heard about them before. These nasty bugs, right? They cause UTIs, E. coli, cholangitis. E. coli is not. You know what? You know where E. is originally from? It comes from your poop, right? It comes from the butt, right? It stays in your gut. But, unfortunately, it's the way it is. If you're able to, like, sneak out, bam, you got an infection. This is what, the patient going to sepsis, they go to, you know, all of a sudden, they get systemic visibility. You know why? Because now neutrophils are growing, like, come on! We gotta go get him, we gotta go get him! They get there, the neutrophils are in the process, trying to kill this guy, right? Phagocytose, the bacteria, bam, release the endotoxin. Endotoxin reaction, what's going to happen? It's a systemic inflammatory response. I'm not going to talk about sepsis, right? Because that's a whole different story, you know. And, you know, the patient turns warm and everything. You become hemodynamically unstable. It's not going to be happily ever after, anyway. The patient is going to die. I know. So, uh, that's the biggest complication. So, you gotta work, you gotta get the IV fluids. It's a lot of problems with this, guys. Now, we've covered everything I think you need to know. One more thing, just for fun. You walk in the patient, the patient was, you know, talking to you, their breath smells like a fresh corpse. I don't know if you've probably ever seen that, but if you ever smell a fresh corpse, it's called uh, theater hepaticus. That's what your bread smells like. I'm just gonna put that here, theater hepaticus. And it's basically because of the elevated ammonia levels in their body, and you know, it, it's kind of you start to smell it out of their mouth. Unfortunately, this is what eventually happens to people that drink excessively. Uh, alcohol is an addiction. Uh, you know, if you're struggling with alcohol withdrawal problems, I suggest you get help. There's a lot of support groups as Alcoholic Anonymous. This is a devastating disease, as you guys all can see right now, with all the complications. These patients do not do well. So you want to catch them early. You want to save their life. And I implore you, if you drink and you have an alcohol addiction problem, get help.
get help. Because in the long run, when you show up in the hospital, there's only so much we can do for you. You know? All right, students. I hope I'm able to break this down for you guys. I hope this is able to help. I'll explain to you guys the complications of liver cirrhosis, portal hypertension, and its complications. Uh, that's kind of the summary. And uh, if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, okay? Uh, make sure you subscribe to this video. I'm doing it for you guys, my fans. And I uh, wish you guys all the best. Good luck. Take care. Like I always say, think positive, baby. Bye.